<laughs> I've always believed that the darkest stories are the ones that linger in the recesses of our minds, the ones that nod our sanity when the lights go out. I used to think that I could handle anything, having spent over a decade as a 911 operator, but nothing could have prepared me for the call that would forever haunt my nightmares. My name is Jessica, and this is the story of the most disturbing 911 call I ever received. It was a frigid winter night, and the clock on the wall ticked its way toward 3 a.m. I sat in the dimly lit dispatch center, the soft hum of computers, and the occasional radio chatter providing the only company. My shift had been quiet so far, with only a handful of routine calls to break the monotony. Then, the phone rang, shattering the silence of the room. I grabbed the receiver, my fingers trembling slightly. 911, what's your emergency? The voice on the other end was frantic, barely more than a terrified whisper. Please, you have to help me. There's something in my house. Something evil. I leaned forward, my heart quickening. I'm here to help you. Can you please tell me your address? The woman on the other end provided her address, her voice quivering with fear. I dispatched a police unit to her location as I continued to speak with her, trying to keep her calm. But with every passing moment, the sense of unease in her voice grew stronger. She described hearing strange noises in her home, whispers that seemed to emanate from the very walls, footsteps in empty rooms, and doors that slammed shut on their own. She told me that her usually fearless German shepherd was cowering in the corner, whimpering and growling at unseen threats. I think it's after me, she said, her voice trembling. I don't know what to do. I reassured her as best I could, urging her to stay on the line with me until the police arrived. But the tension in the air was palpable, as if the very darkness itself had descended upon her home. As we spoke, she mentioned something that sent a shiver down my spine. She said her daughter had seen a shadowy figure standing at the foot of her bed the night before, its eyes gleaming with an otherworldly malevolence. It knows I'm talking to you, she whispered, her voice barely audible. It's here, in the room with me. I could hear her gasping, struggling for breath, as though an invisible hand was tightening around her throat. Ma'am, stay on the line with me, I implored, my heart pounding, praying that the police would arrive in time. Then... It happened. A gut-wrenching scream pierced through the phone, a scream filled with pure terror and agony. It was abruptly cut off, replaced by a chilling silence. I called out to her, panic welling up within me, but there was no response. The line remained open, but the woman had vanished into the abyss of that horrifying night. I attempted to contact the police unit I had dispatched, but there was no response. It was as if they had disappeared along with the woman. Panic set in as I realized I was utterly helpless, unable to do anything but listen to the eerie silence on the other end of the line. Minutes passed like hours, and then, finally, a voice crackled over the radio. It was one of the police officers I had sent to the woman's house. We're on the scene, he said, his voice filled with urgency. The front door is wide open, and there are signs of a struggle inside. Relief washed over me as I heard their voices, but it was short-lived. The officers began searching the house, room by room, their voices growing increasingly frantic. They couldn't find the woman, and there was no sign of forced entry or an intruder. Then, one of the officers made a discovery that sent a chill down my spine. We found the daughter, he said, his voice trembling. She's in her room, but... But what? I asked, my heart pounding. She's... she's gone, just like her mother. It was as though they had both vanished into thin air, leaving behind a house filled with unanswered questions and an eerie sense of dread. The investigation that followed was one of the most baffling and disturbing I had ever witnessed. There were no signs of foul play, no evidence to suggest that anyone had entered the house that night. The officers who had responded to the call reported feeling an overwhelming sense of unease as they searched the property, as though they were being watched by unseen eyes. As the days turned into weeks, the case remained unsolved, and the disappearance of the woman and her daughter became a chilling mystery that haunted the town. I couldn't shake the feeling that the 911 call had been a glimpse into something otherworldly, something beyond our understanding. I became obsessed with the case, poring over the call recordings and the statements of the responding officers, searching for any clue that might explain what had happened that night. But the more I delved into the details, 
the more elusive the answers became. Then, I received an anonymous letter. It arrived in a plain envelope with no return address, and inside was a single piece of paper with a cryptic message. The Hollow House. The name struck a chord in my memory. I had heard stories about Hollow House, an old, abandoned mansion on the outskirts of town. It was said to be cursed, a place of malevolent energy and restless spirits. Locals whispered that the house was a gateway to another realm, a place where the living and the dead intersected. Driven by a growing sense of unease, I began to investigate Hollow House. I reached out to a local historian, a man named Samuel, who had dedicated his life to uncovering the town's dark history. He shared with me the legends and lore surrounding the mansion, tales of a family named the Hollows who had once lived there. According to the legends, the Hollows had dabbled in the occult, performing sinister rituals in a bid for power and immortality. The mansion was said to be a focal point of malevolent energy, a place where the boundaries between our world and the supernatural were blurred. Samuel and I decided to visit Hollow House, armed with flashlights, cameras, and a sense of trepidation. As we approached the decaying mansion, a feeling of dread washed over me. The air seemed to grow colder, and the atmosphere weighed heavily upon us. We stepped inside the mansion, our flashlights cutting through the darkness. The walls were adorned with peeling wallpaper and decaying portraits of long-forgotten faces. It was as though the very walls of the house held the memories of the past, and the echoes of the woman's scream still reverberated in my mind. As we explored the mansion, we came across a room that sent shivers down my spine. It was a chamber adorned with arcane symbols and sigils, a place where the Hollow family had conducted their dark rituals. The air in the room was heavy with malevolence, and I could feel an oppressive presence bearing down upon us. We decided to conduct an impromptu investigation, setting up our cameras and voice recorders. As we began to ask questions, the temperature in the room dropped, and we could see our breath in the frigid air. Is there anyone here with us? Samuel asked, his voice trembling. And then, it happened. A disembodied voice echoed through the room, a chilling whisper that seemed to come from all directions. Get out! We exchanged terrified glances, but something compelled us to stay. We needed answers, and we weren't about to leave without them. We continued to ask questions, and the room seemed to come alive with paranormal activity. Objects moved on their own, and we could hear faint, ghostly whispers that seemed to emanate from the very walls themselves. Who are you? I asked, my voice quivering. The response sent shockwaves through my very core. We are the Hollows. We are trapped here, bound by the darkness. As we delved deeper into our investigation, the malevolent energy in the room grew stronger. It was as though the very walls of the mansion were closing in around us, and an overwhelming sense of dread washed over me. But we pressed on, determined to uncover the truth. We learned that the Hollow family's experiments with the occult had gone horribly wrong, unleashing forces that they could not control. The mansion had become a nexus of malevolent energy, a place where the spirits of the Hollows and other restless souls were trapped for eternity. We also learned that the woman and her daughter had lived in the same neighborhood as Hollow House. Their home had been just a stone's throw away from its foreboding presence, and it seemed that whatever malevolent force had claimed them was connected to the curse that had plagued the mansion for generations. As we concluded our investigation, we decided to attempt a cleansing ritual, a last-ditch effort to banish the malevolent force that had tormented the town for so long. Armed with incense, holy water, and prayers, we ventured into the heart of the mansion, to the very chamber where the Hollows had conducted their dark rituals. The air grew thick with malevolent energy as we performed the cleansing ritual. The symbols etched into the walls seemed to glow with an unholy light, and the room itself seemed to rebel against our efforts. It was as though the very essence of the house resented our presence, a sentient force determined to protect its dark secrets. But we stood our ground, our determination unwavering. With one final incantation, we unleashed a surge of positive energy, a blinding light that filled the chamber. The very walls of the mansion seemed to recoil, and the shadows retreated, dissipating into nothingness. The curse had been broken, and a profound sense of peace washed over us. As we left Hollow House, we knew that our town would never be the same again. The malevolent force that had plagued our community for generations had been vanquished, 
and the dark secrets of the mansion would remain buried in the past. But the memory of that fateful 911 call and the woman and her daughter who had vanished into the abyss would never truly leave me. It was a reminder that true horror could be found in the most unexpected places and that the battle against darkness was a never-ending one. As I looked back at Hollow House one last time, I couldn't help but wonder how many other cursed places lurked in the shadows, waiting to ensnare the unsuspecting and perpetuate their malevolent legacies. The darkness, it seemed, was always lurking, waiting for the moment to strike, to remind us that the line between the living and the dead is thin, and that true horror can be just a phone call away.